Lots going on in the healthcare space here at Health in Las Vegas. You know Bayer, it's the company that gave you lots of over-the-counter products, but they're also moving more into health and innovation. Joining me now to talk about all of that and more is Sebastian Gut, president of US Bayer. Hi, Sebastian. Hi, Anjali, great being <laughs> with you. So talk to me about the news of the day. Cell and gene therapy, hot space in the healthcare space. What's Bayer doing there? Indeed, you know, we've, uh, we've doubled down on cell and gene therapies and we're opening uh, today our first uh, th cell therapy launch facility in Berkeley, a 250 million US dollar investment uh, and a facility that will play a very important role as we advance the most cutting edge uh, cell therapies. Uh, and one of the examples is in Parkinson's therapy, uh, an area where, where the unmet need remains significant. I know that there's a lot to discuss about, you know, the company's pipeline, looking at where health and innovation is going. We're at a tech, uh, you know, uh, conference right now. What role do you see the digital space playing in something like cell and gene, especially AI and all the technologies that are coming to par? How does Bayer deal with that? You know, uh, I believe that there's a ton happening at the intersection of biology and technology. It helps us uh, accelerate uh, and advance uh, innovation, and ultimately it helps us deliver better patient care. Uh, so we deploy technology all across the value chain, and most importantly, we recognize that it needs to be done in partnership with others. No company can do that alone, so we're excited to be here at Health. Speaking of partnerships, big acquisition a few years ago, Monsanto. I know that there's a lot of discussion about innovation in food, especially with the food deserts that exist in this country, lots of attention needing to be paid to healthier food intake. Where do you see the potential opportunity post this acquisition for the company? You know, I see a ton of opportunities. I spent time uh, just at uh, Farm Progress in Decatur, Illinois, a couple a couple days ago, and saw myself a lot of the innovation we're advancing. Uh, one of the specific examples is short statue corn, which is a very, very significant innovation uh, and something that left me energized and excited, particularly as I was spending uh, time with farmers. There's a lot of work to be done. You know, every farmer in the United States feeds 166 Americans and people around the world. Uh, and at the same time, we have 34 million Americans that live in food deserts, including 9 million children. And very often that also overlaps with healthcare deserts. So there's work to be done and that's what we're focused on. And I know one of that in one of those uh, efforts includes a partnership with Kroger. So looking at what the opportunity is, you are basically in charge of the food products that come out of the ground, essentially. I know that there had been a lot of uh, concern about Monsanto during the time of the acquisition. What has changed now or what has been done to kind of allay some of those fears and focus on food innovation in a way that actually is healthy for people? You know, uh, um, as, as you said, uh, we're squarely focused on innovation in a space that continues to require innovation. Feeding the world is a very, very significant task and food is a medicine. Uh, we're partnering with Kroger, for example, to address and alleviate uh, um, food uh, deserts across the United States. Uh, and we're also partnering with folks like Luke Bryan to b bring attention uh, to, to those uh, spaces. Um, and it's not just partnerships, it's very concrete action. Uh, so we have committed more than 7 million meals over the course of the, our partnership with Luke Bryan uh, and re-upped that commitment with another 1 million meals uh, just very recently. We're partnering with organizations such as AquaCrest uh, to, uh, um, to provide uh, qualified nurses uh, uh, for uh, rural America. Uh, so there's a lot we're doing to advance the quality of, uh, uh, of, of ultimately care and, uh, and food that is provided to Americans. Certainly an area of a lot of unmet need. Um, what about AI in all of this? How does the company think about AI's use and where do you see, where has it already been in use and where do you see opportunity? You know, to us, AI is a very, very important, ultimately, tool. And it's a tool to accelerate the work we do. It's a tool to significantly advance the work we do. And it's a tool to ultimately see patients, uh, but also farmers and consumers benefit um, um, in ways they would have otherwise not been able to benefit from. 
I'll give you a specific example in healthcare. Um, so we recently doubled down on our work uh, in, uh, in, in radiology and in building out an AI platform in radiology. We acquired a company called Blackford Analytics. Uh, and the whole premise is to augment the work of radiologists and help them to detect disease which may otherwise go undetected. And that's a big deal. Yeah, absolutely. We're definitely seeing a lot in that imaging space, right? Well, we'll have to leave it there, Sebastian. But thank you so much for joining me today. Sebastian Gu, Bayer US President. Thank you.